Uh, greetings, dear students. So today I'll be speaking on ACL reconstruction, a very commonly performed surgery. And uh, this is a two-part talk. I'll first start with uh, the commonest uh, question, which graft to harvest? What are the various graft options that you have? And then I'll shift to a narration of a surgical video based on a hamstring ACL reconstruction technique. So when it comes to graft harvest options, there is no one good graft for the ACL. You must be well versed in harvesting of various kinds of grafts for ACL reconstruction, be it a primary or a revision reconstruction scenario. Hamstrings and bone patella graft are said to be what is called the double gold standard, meaning that both grafts are equally good. Each graft has its own advantages and set of disadvantages. Now, the obvious advantage of a hamstring graft is that it is a much stronger graft than bone patella when it uh, comes to figures like Young's modulus, yield to failure, etc. Can be harvested through a much smaller incision. It is the only graft which is appropriate to use in a skeletally immature patient. Of course, you can also think of using the pure quadriceps tendon graft without the bone plug. But when you are operating a skeletally immature person, you need to use a soft tissue graft. Now, the disadvantages of the hamstring graft is that it relies on a less predictable soft tissue to bone healing compared to the more predictable bone to bone healing as we see with bone patella grafts. It suffers from the problem of uh, tunnel widening, which is again common with all soft tissue grafts. A semi tendinosis, if you remember from your clinical anatomy, has five attachments in the region of the proximal tibia. Now, each of these attachments must be carefully identified and severed so that you can obtain a full length of the semitendinosus, particularly the attachment which goes to the medial head of gastronemius. Sometimes in very muscular people, it can be located very deep. And unless you are able to locate it and cut it, you will actually end up amputating the graft prematurely. So it is technically more difficult to harvest than a BTB graft, which is just lying there. And of course, uh, the collagen quality in a semi-T graft. So when I initially said that the semi-T graft is stronger than the BTB graft, it is only with respect to certain numbers like the Young's modulus or the elastic modulus, which is almost double that of the BTB graft. But the BTB graft has an advantage that the collagen is more tightly packaged. So that makes this graft a little stiff. And uh, you'll find that in a patient in whom you have done hamstring graft might come to you with a little bit of laxity, but with a firm endpoint, unlike that is seen in a BTB graft. Now, I'll just take you through a short video on uh, how you can do a special kind of a graft preparation of a hamstring graft in some situations where you anticipate that the hamstrings will be inadequate. Now, this is an all inside kind of a graft preparation. Now, to make it easier to understand, I am using a adjustable cortical button at one end. I'm also using a no button device at this end. You'll uh, very soon see. So this is a no button device at this end and an adjustable cortical button device at this end. I have folded the graft into four and I'm just stitching the ends of the grafts to each other so that you have a four strand ACL graft with one fixation button attached at the top and one fixation button attached at the bottom. So this kind of a graft preparation, commonly known as the all inside variety of uh, graft preparation, allows you to get a very thick graft with uh, good suture material all around it. And in situations where you anticipate that the graft material is going to be inadequate, this kind of a graft preparation will give you a very robust graft. In this particular instance, a simple four folded semi T was only coming to seven millimeters in diameter. But with the all inside type preparation, I was able to increase the diameter to seven and a half millimeters. Now, don't be fixated by uh, eight millimeter as the bare minimum that you need for all hamstring graft. It depends more on the size of the knee and the size of the femoral condyle. So for a very short patient, even a 7 mm or a 7.5 mm graft as is seen in this instance might be appropriate. Now coming to the bone patella graft. The obvious advantage of bone patella graft is that it is directly visible. It can be harvested through a simple open incision. So that can also be a disadvantage. You need to give a fairly big incision. So once you give an incision, you directly see the paratinin covering the patella tendon. 
you incise the parotene in the middle, you dissect out the medial and the lateral borders of the patellar tendon, and then you generally use a scale or an instrument with a known dimension, like this particular osteotome. I know the uh, width of this osteotome is 10 millimeters, so I generally use this as a standard for measurement while harvesting my bone patella graft or the quadriceps graft. You mark the central one-third of the, it, it needn't be 10 millimeters. The entire patellar tendon width is less than 30 millimeters. It could be less than 10 millimeters as well. But in most instances, you will be able to harvest a central 10 millimeter strip of the patellar tendon. Once you have incised it cleanly, so this incision must be given sharply with a new blade and one must not hesitate while giving this incision. Otherwise, you will have a graft which is oddly shaped, tapering at the top or tapering at the bottom. Now, a saw is very, very important to use. Never try to take a BTB graft with just an osteotome in your hand. Always use a saw, either an oscillating saw or if you have in your setup, even a reciprocating saw will give you a very good graft. Only when you have marked the borders of the bone plug, generally the bone plug is uh, size 10 millimeters in width and 20 millimeters in length. At the tibial end, you can take a very deep bone plug. You can uh, go almost till the entire length of the saw blade. The extra bone that you have left, you can use to graft the patellar defect. Now, once you have taken uh, the bone graft properly, it just comes out on its own. It just needs very minimal assistance from the osteotome and it will just come out on its own. You must use the osteotome at the patellar end as well and follow the same sequence. Of course, you need to be a bit more careful with the patella. Otherwise, you might create a patella fracture. And uh, this, I feel, is one of the most important uh, bony cuts that the inferior cut. And uh, once uh, you have taken the requisite bone cuts, it is better to pre-drill holes in this graft, uh, keeping the graft attached to its bony bed. That prevents side-to-side uh, -side migration of the plug. And uh, that is how you harvest the plug out of the uh, native bed. And this is the resultant defect. This must be closed very carefully. The paratinin and the tendon must be closed separately. And uh, you must size the bone patella graft properly. If you have not sized it properly, you will struggle during the surgery. Generally, you will be able to size it to a 10 millimeter. And as is seen in this particular video, it must go very smoothly with very less force through the sizing tunnels.